Hey there, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about asymptotic analysis. And if you're looking to pursue a career in computer science, uh, this is a very important topic that will basically stick with you for life. So before we begin, let's talk about a couple of terminology we have here. And that is whenever you're writing a solution to a problem, whether it's inside a function or not, that is basically an algorithm. And an algorithm is essentially a, a series of instructions or operations carried out to solve a problem. So when we're measuring the efficiency of these algorithms, we don't use actual seconds or nanoseconds. And that is because there are some factors you have to consider, and that is, uh, which programming language are you using? Are you using Python? Are you using Java, C++? Java and C++ are much faster than Python and also your, uh, your computing power as well, right? If you're using a very powerful computer, if you have better hardware than another computer, this program will run faster on a more powerful computer than, let's say, a, a cheaper computer from, I guess, the early 2000s, right? These are some things you have to consider. And for that reason, we don't use actual seconds to measure the speed or efficiency of our program. Instead, we use something much more scalable, and that is asymptotic runtime, which is the total number of operations performed based on input size. So what is asymptotic? So I pulled this dictionary definition, and that is of a function approaching a given value as an expression containing a variable tends to infinity. Let's look at our runtime definition, which is the total number of operations performed based on input size. This could be the input function where you get user defined inputs. This could be parameters passed into a function. These are considered inputs. And notice here in asymptotic the definition says containing a variable tends to infinity. With this input size, we can assume that it will be a very, very large input, almost infinite, but not exactly, right? So we measure the efficiency of our program based on how many operations it would take based on the input size. So we have some terminology here for runtime, and that is we have big O, which is the upper bound. This is the worst case. Big Omega, which is the lower bound, which is the best case. And we don't care about the best case. We only prepare for the worst case. And we have big theta, which is in between uh, the best case and the worst case. So we usually just care about this one, which is the worst case, right? Let's say you are taking a final exam. You never think about the, you know, the best case, right? Because let's say best case, you get a hundred on the exam. You do well, you could get an A, but worst case, you want to prepare for that, right? What if the exam is harder than you thought it would be? So what would be the lowest score you would need to maybe get an A or pass the class, depending on what, what kind of student you are? This is what we mean by worst case and best case. So let's talk about the next definition, which is operations. Uh, this one you should be familiar with. We're going to start slow and just in this video, we're going to just talk about integers and floats. So each of the following primitive operations is one operation cost. So you have assignment, you have arithmetic operations, which include addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, modulus, and floor division or integer division. We have our comparison operators, you know, greater than, less than, equality, uh, not equal. So all of these operations, they're just one operation cost. So this is one, this is one, this is one, each of these is one. For print, we can treat this as one operation since it is mainly used for debugging and it doesn't really affect the solution you, uh, you are writing to the problem. Uh, in this case, since we're printing an integer or float, uh, we're just going to consider these operations as uh, constant operations or one operations. Uh, one final thing is, let's say we have an operation cost of two, three, or five, right? So we're having like five lines of uh, assignment or arithmetic operations, we group these costs. So any constant number, so let's say you have 1, 10, 500, 200,000, this would be considered constant. So we say O of 1. And if you have any linear operations like n, 2n, 5n, uh, 3n plus 4, we drop all coefficients and constants and we say this is O of n, this is linear. And if we have n squared, 10n squared, 10n squared plus 2n, this would be quadratic because n squared is the largest power. So you might not understand this right now. So we're going to uh, go over some examples and hopefully you will start to understand what I'm, what I mean by the runtime, the total number of operations performed based on input size. 
So first, let's say you had x equals 5. This is an assignment. This is one operation. Let's say you have another one, y equals 10. This is an assignment as well. So this is one operation. So together, this is two operations. Now, remember, runtime is the total number of operations performed based on input size. What is the input size? We didn't give any, right? We didn't call any input function. We're not passing any values into a parameter. So there's no input size. Therefore, no matter how many times I run the program, it will always run these two lines over and over again. It's constant, it's hard coded. Therefore, the cost of this program is two operations, which we group as O of one, constant, okay? So let's say we have a third line and we said Z equals X plus Y. Technically, it is two operations because we have an addition and then an assignment, but we're just going to say one because it's constant either way right i could say two and this is in total four operations but i'm going to just put one and say in total this is all of one okay so this would still be constant because no matter how many times i run the program there's no input size and it will always run these same three lines and this one does not necessarily mean that it only costs one operation but rather it is a symbol denoting that it is a constant operation. If you've ever taken calculus, they might use C, right? Because if you use, if you do, if you take the integral of a function, you always have to add in that plus C at the end. And this C could be any number, but it's a constant number representation. So in computer science, we don't use C because this could be confused as a, a variable. So instead we use one. Okay. So in total, this is O of one. Okay, what do we have? Print one, print two, print three. Well, if I run my program over and over again, right, it will always print the same three numbers. This is constant, right? This is one operation, two operation, three operations. So this would be O of one. Now, what if I wanted to print all the numbers from one to a thousand? Well, it wouldn't make sense to do line by line uh, calling these print statements. Instead, we should use a for loop, right? So I would say for I am range one to 1001, actually, let's just say 501. So one to 500, I'm going to print I, and if I run my program, this will be from one to 500. And I run it again, same thing, right? Hard coded, it's constant. It's going to be the same result every time. So what is the runtime of this operation, right? What is the runtime of our program here? Well, we have print, which is a constant operation. It's a single operation of one. And we're repeating this print 500 times. So we're basically doing one plus one plus one plus one 500 times. 500 is a constant number, right? As we mentioned here, it doesn't matter if it's one operation, 10, 500, 200,000, we group it as O of 1. So this program runs O of 1 constant time. Okay, so what if I had n equals 500 here, or 501, and I put in n here? Well, again, all I'm doing is just putting this constant integer into a variable. So if I run it, we get 1 to 500. It doesn't matter how many times I run it, it will always be 1 to 500. Now, here's when uh, things get interesting. Instead of putting in 501, I'm going to say int input enter a number. So if I save this and I run it, if I put in 10, it'll go from 1 to 9. If I put in 500, it'll go from 1 to 499. Of course, I gotta put in the plus 1 here. So if I put in 500, it will go from 1 to 500. And if I put in 1,000, it will go from 1 to 1,000. So in this case, what is the runtime of our program? Well, n is now an input, right? It's int input. So remember, runtime is the total number of operations performed based on input size. So our input size is n because it's a single integer number, n. Uh, you could name this variable x or y, but we, when we're calculating the runtime, we typically use n for a single input. So in this case, our runtime is going to be linear to the input, right? So if I put in 500, the for loop runs 500 times. If I put in a thousand, it will run a thousand times. If I put in a million, it will run a million times. I'm not going to put in a million, obviously, because it will take a while to complete. 
but you get the picture, right? Basically, this is dependent on the input size and it is linear to the input size. Now, if I change this to n squared and I run my program, if I put in three, it'll go from, oh, because of the plus one. So we should put the plus one here instead. Oops. So let's run our program again. And now I put in uh, three, it'll go from one to nine. And if I put in 10, it'll go from one to 100. So in this case, our program runs n squared times, right, based on our input. So if I put in one, it'll run one time, three, it'll run nine times, uh, 10, it'll run 100 times. If I put in 1,000, it'll run a million times. So you can see how our program scales based on input, right? So if I change this to 500 and I run it, our program is going to be 500 squared plus one. But no matter how many times I run my program, it will always be the same number. In this case, 500 is a too big of a number, so let's say five. So if I run this over and over again and I put in 100, doesn't matter, right? It'll be 25, run it again. Let's put in a bigger number, doesn't matter, 25. So in this case, we are completely ignoring this input. We changed n to five. This is basically a useless line. So if we didn't have this, we can see that our program is now dependent on our input. Okay. So if it was just n plus one, this is linear. And if we had n to the power of two or n squared, this is quadratic. Now, if I copy and paste this line and do this, I have two for loops. What is the runtime of our program now? Well, this is just linear, right? It's n, and this is n as well. So this for loop runs n times, this for loop runs n times. So together we have 2n, which is linear, right? We group it as O of n. So whether it's n, 2n, 5n, 3n plus 4. So this 4 could be like x plus x plus 5, y equals 3. This will still be considered linear because n is the larger power here and we drop constants we drop coefficients so we get o of n and the reason why we group our uh, runtimes into categories is because uh, it's asymptotic so we're going towards infinity it doesn't matter if you have infinity plus infinity right or infinity squared times uh, two it doesn't really matter because once you get that big of a number it's the difference is pretty small and uh, also you know It'd be easier to say my program runs in linear time o of n or quadratic time n squared instead of saying, oh, it's exactly 10 n squared plus five or 10 n squared plus five n plus three. This would be too specific. We don't really care about the exact runtime cost. We just care about which group uh, to place them in. OK. All right. So hopefully you have a pretty decent idea on asymptotic analysis, runtime. So let's do a quick practice just to make sure you understood some of the things in this video. If not, it's okay, just rewatch the video. And in the next couple of videos, we're going to go over more examples so that you can really solidify these ideas. So we have three functions here, and I want you to analyze the worst case runtime per function, okay? So just take a brief minute or two and try to figure out what would be the runtime cost for each function. Okay, so the first one, we have x equals zero, so this is constant operation. And then we have a for loop. So inside this for loop, this is plus equal. This is basically an addition. So this is constant. And how many times are we, are we repeating this for loop? We're repeating it n squared times, right? It's n times n, that's n squared. So we're repeating it n squared times. So in total, our runtime of this function is n squared. Okay, so this is quadratic. If we have four as an input, then this for loop runs 16 times, 10, this will run 100 times. Okay, so it's n squared based on the input n. So the second one, if we have y equals zero, again, this is constant. And uh, inside this for loop, it's constant as well because it's just addition. So how many times does this line get repeated? This gets repeated n over two times, right? So in total, our runtime is n over two. And what is that? That is linear, right? Because it's basically saying one half times n. And we group that with our linear uh, runtime cost. So this is O of n. So over here, this was O of n squared. And over here, this was O of n. Finally, we have function three. So z equals zero, this is constant. And then we have our for loop. 
we have two for loops actually. So this one is basically function one, right? It's this part. So this is constant because it's just an addition. And we're repeating this n squared times. So this is n squared. And then over here, this is constant as well. But we're repeating this for loop n over two times. So in total, we get n squared plus n over two, and I guess plus one if you want to include this assignment. But what is the highest power here? The highest power is square, right? n squared. So we say this is all of n squared. Okay, we group this into our quadratic group. So this is all of n squared. Okay, so hopefully you have a pretty good understanding of runtime. If not, try to watch the video again. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And uh, yeah, that's it for asymptotic analysis. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.